Bloodline, ça a fait, ça a fait. Just finished work at the dog, so we're gonna be showing you some clips from that today. And uh, how we clean our kennels, you know, since we got the new setup and whatnot. You know, just a piece of what we do. Um, so you guys have an idea of how we take care of our dogs. Also, guys, um, remember, um, I'm a full-time, you know, worker as well. You know, I get my hands in everything. You know, so I uh, have a regular job, have the kennel, so it's not a full-time business for me. So these are a few things that you guys could, you know, maybe add to your kennel, you know, to make things easier on you if you're full-time. Especially if you're full-time, guys, one of the things that I will advise if you're going to be, you know, I'm um, sorry, not full-time, but part-time uh, breeder or owning a kennel, uh, make sure you set yourself up for success and you build your kennels the right way make the work easier on you as you go along so that way it doesn't take up much of your day so you can concentrate more on the dogs as well uh, so about to show you some other things that i do okay guys let's tune into this pkc make sure you like subscribe bad things going on bless So guys as you can see i'm just washing out the kennels you know as you know you know we did some modification to the kennels we still have a lot of work to do but yeah you know what it is <laughs> yeah i pack all the dogs all in one kennel yeah smoke and roxy always jump on top of the cage so that's why i have them in the last kennel okay it's a little bit too high so they can jump as you can see these guys already messing with my kennel you know i might have to replace some wood here and there every now and then on these kennels you know but yeah um someone asked me about if the wood was treated yeah majority of the pallet wood that i use is treated you know but yeah um that's kind of what we've been working on the dog's still doing stuff you know mia and mufasa they try eating the kennels every now and then but yeah we're just working on it guys so as you can see um I clean up the kennels you know um, sometimes i might have some extra debris you know from the mess of the dog so you know use my brush <laughs> Yeah, and just, you know, try to soften it up and then, you know, pressure wash it as I go. And everything goes to the back, guys, you know, so um, it goes through a gutting system that I created. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage on that. And then it goes down into um, sort of like a, a drainage um, location. And then from there, the excess would go down, you know, to a gutting system that's behind it as well, you know. So that's how it works out and you know we just clean out every day I try to do this you know uh, once a day heavy cleaning and a second time during the course of the day or before or after you know I just pass and give it a rinse out you know so we don't have any like smell of pee and whatnot you know or if there's anything there you know I'll handle it so guys just keep following this video I know it's a little long but you know we have a lot of information given out here you know so normally i just scoop up the stuff the big stuff and then we rinse out everything else as you can see so this is just one way thing that you can do guys which will help you out a lot and most of us you know most of us here especially locally we're not full-time you know breeders or full-time kennel owners you know so sometimes the time is just difficult you know and you find yourself neglecting the dog sometimes because you have to be cleaning and whatnot so what i would say is this before you get into the game try to do this if you're like me and then you don't have much time you know to set up and whatnot or everything was coming to you so quickly you know like me um you know try to as you go along the way get a setup like this if you don't already have it try to get a setup like this not necessarily what i have but set up your stuff, you know, in a, in a way where it will be easier for you, you know, where I always think like if you can just pressure wash your kennel, it would make it much easier. And uh, as you guys realize, you know, on my kennels, I have those um, two by fours on the bottom for feet. So that way the water can just pass right through the bottom, you know, so the cage is not getting that itself. And the dog has a little bit of elevated space as well. So if rain is pouring in like hurricane style, because, you know, in the Caribbean, you know, it's not splashing into the kennel. Yeah, I just give the dogs a little wet up, you know, because we're about to go and do some exercising, you know. So again, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get that out of the way quickly. 
but here you guys are seeing that I'm using some apple cider vinegar in the water and I'll explain so guys with the apple cider vinegar you know it's a good way to cleanse inside of the dogs it also gets rid of the the mites as well you know so uh, dogs would basically pass it through their paws and then you know the mites would just run away but it's also a good way to keep your guy your guys on an alkaline kind of vibe you know um, I saw a couple kennels using it and also I have one kennel lady all of you all probably know she recommended that I you know go into it you know so I always had the knowledge on it but you know she recommended it and I have a lot of respect for her big up yourself Amber you know so we went ahead and do this right here you know and um, the reason I'm doing it now guys is because I'm about to work out the dogs so I set up the dogs water and everything so they have it there usually when the dogs finish work out they go on and drink a lot of water so I know for sure it's going through their system right here you see me just you know getting the dogs a lot <laughs> check smoke on the top of the cage there yeah so that's just me giving them commands and they're looking out you know one day and okay what's up there you know I'm just pointing and they just <laughs> ready for action but yeah guys um you can see some cages on the outside you know i have cages all about the place whilst i was doing the work on the inside there so i tied the dogs outside for a little while you know while i was working on the kennels but yeah guys so i'm about to show you guys another piece of you know how we clean so this is what i use most of the time well i also use some disinfectant as well but this does the job for me especially when i didn't have the floors painted you know uh the concrete itself would the bare concrete would hold a lot of debris inside of you know a lot of crevices and whatnot so this would kind of get to all of the corners and then get your concrete back white as slit you know um i still use it right now you know because you, know, you just get a little bit in there i try to dilute it as much as i can you know so that way it still does the job you know you see the dogs already scraping off my paint and you can see you know the decent dogs on the end roxy and smoke you know the ones who are already veterans there you know they don't, they don't mess up their cage you know they don't eat up their cage they don't scratch off the paint and whatnot you know pretty disciplined dogs you know we'll get all of them there at some point but yeah guys I, and i know a lot of people talk about you know the clorox and whatnot and the dog skin but i haven't seen a problem yet i know it could cause some difficulty but it's working for me so far so i'm sticking to it so uh, right now i'm about to show you guys how we can get the exercising out of the way quickly you know uh, it's a little difficult to follow this video so i'll set up my camera in a way where you guys can see it a little bit better but i definitely advise you guys to get you know the fishing poles you know it's a good way to exercise the dogs without you personally getting the exercise yourself you know when you have a lot of dogs like me you know you find yourself walking out six times because you have six dogs and each dog's each dog getting like one workout so you know you make it easier for yourself you use stuff you know to get the dogs to exercise you know burn them out you know because they have a lot of energy especially the american bully breed they try to get out that energy they always want to please the owner so this the fishing pole is a great way to do so when you know you must let them get it as well guys because you know that's the only way that they know that they're actually performing the task you know and uh this is a good way to get them to relax as well when you you know getting the um you know the um the animal that it has on the end of it <laughs> the squirrel out of their mouth you know you let them relax you you know tell them to release or leave i use the term leave you know i also get them to sit down you know messiah um he's a little bit more laid back you know that's him there you know so um with him you know we're still kind of getting there but as you can see guys you know roxy the veteran in the game she has it down she's not gonna try to grab it whilst it's in my hand you know she'll wait for the command she's really excited and she's like a bullet in the game there's no dog out there as as left as athletic as roxy you know and um another thing is that she might be expecting guys you know i did a couple ais on her you know so i'll be giving you guys some more info on that so some people might be saying oh boy you're not supposed to be exercising a dog so hard when she's pregnant well she's in her first trimester let's put it that way <laughs> and guys you remember these are animals these dogs like originally you know from the wolf they would still hunt you know like so that's how i look at it you know where these dogs would still be performing out there even when they're pregnant otherwise you know they don't eat because they don't have owners feeding them yes these dogs have we have here have gone through a lot of domestication you know and you know getting them to this level so um 
I understand where most people come from and of course you know I try to not make it too excessive as you can see I try to keep it low with her so that way you know she's not doing too much of the jumping you know as you see when we got started she did a, a nice jump there but I just try to keep it low with her guys you know just taking a little caution but at the same time you have to understand that that's what these dogs do you know that's what they were made to do as from creation let's put it that way not from what we put into them but over generations i can understand where people coming from um that's legacy there <laughs> such she uh she's a really she's really growing well she's also very smart as well um she's a sister to roxy only from a different litter but same mother same father um, there's only three of these females on the island, you know, um, the breedings normally have like 12, 13 pups, but majority of it is always male. So there were only like three females and I was able to grab two of them. So it's a very limited stock, you know, these females. So I plan on keeping them and, you know, continuing to grow them. As you can see, the two different phenotypes, you know, Roxy carrying, you know, the blue gene on the inside, black gene on the outside, you know, so she's dominant black. And also she's a little bit more short and stocky, you know, as compared to Legacy, who is a little bit more closer to less, let's just use a better term, like on the Excel side of things, you know, so um, looking out for some great, we're looking out for some like great stuff from her as well, maybe a different variation from what we got from Roxy, but I definitely believe both of them carrying the, the uh, fawn gene, the AY gene. Uh, we know Roxy carrying it, so you know it will be a wonder to see what she'd produce. Here's our girl Mia, you know, she's a little more stubborn than the other dogs. <laughs> she's ducking, ducking each time, you know, you know, not wanting to release. <laughs> yeah, but um, she'll get there, man. You know, I just have her enjoying herself, you know. So, but she's getting there, as you can see. She drop it, you know, trying to get her to sit and whatnot. She, now she's grabbing something else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mia, very energetic dog, you know, typical bully, you know, um, you know, pocket bully, trying to get the attention all the time of the owner. That's kind of how they are, love attention. So she's our ghost tri female. So we'll be possibly hoping to get a breeding out of her this year, you know. So for those of you looking for something, you know, more pocket, you know, something that you can have around the household that's not taking up too much space, you know, this is kind of like what you're looking for. You know, so you have a nice stocky dog, but at the same time, you know, something that's easy to, you know, bring up in a household, you know, as a house dog. Here we have our boy Smoke, you know, the giant in the pack. Yeah, boy doing pretty well, you know, start back eating recently. Um, like I told you guys, the dogs were in heat, so, you know, he's still trying to get there. But, you know, that's his thing, so he's so excited, you know, you see him jumping like... <laughs> but, yeah, but he knows it's a game, you know, unlike Roxy, she would take it more serious. You know, but yeah, man, Smoke is a, a great dog, as you can see with his productions out there. He produces a lot of bones, so we know he's, you know, so far we can say he's a good producer. You know, but uh, yeah, I'll put some more litters down. But yeah, man, really nice dog, Smoke. Uh, you know, the heart and soul of the kennel, he and Roxy. So yeah. But guys, um, as you can see, um, we're just taking about, you know, five, five minutes on each dog, five to ten minutes on each dog, you know, of chasing the pole uh the video is a little bit on fast forward i don't know if you guys realize that but um this is a good thing that you can use you know the the fishing pole to kind of take a lot of that stress away from you as far as you know especially if you are you know maybe backyard breeder or part-time breeder you know this is some of the things that you can practice you know to kind of get the dog stuff out of the way so you can get back to your daily routine besides the kennel so this is one way that you can make it easier so i kind of wanted to extend this video that's why we have an 18 minute video today so you guys can understand that it doesn't take much time and this is the kind of stuff that the dogs love when you put that energy out there you know it's also easier for the dogs to um eat you know a lot of people been messaging me about oh the dog's not eating this that and the other you know what what should we feed what we should we feed but if you're not exercising the dogs the dog's not really releasing a lot of energy so the body is not like asking for more energy intake you know and that's what the food does you know a lot of food would bring in energy especially the proteins and stuff which is one of the main things you know that the dogs require in their diet so if they're not burning that then you can't expect the dog to be eating well as they would if unless they were exercising 
I still believe I could do a better job with my dogs as far as exercising. You know, this is just one of the ways that we do it. You know, guys, this is not an everyday thing. You know, sometimes I'll take one dog out or two dogs out. We go by the beach, take a nice lime, nice long walks. You know, sometimes I'll send them out to fetch, you know, which are a little bit more than what you see in here. You know, and sometimes we would just go on a little lime somewhere, you know, so different times. But most times in the yard, you know, we try to use the fishing pole, you know, to get the, to burn out the energy. You know, you have to do that, guys. So exercise, guys, that's one way that you can gain and see the, I mean, if you're not exercising your dog, bottom line, you're not going to see the full potential. And I know a lot of you guys, you know, getting the bully pro and whatnot, but, you know, as a testament to the product itself, you have to exercise your dogs. There's not one person who contact me and say, hey, you know what, we're looking into some bully pro and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. And then I always tell everyone, hey, you have to exercise your dog. You know, it's not like someone going into the gym and then taking whey protein and at the end of the day, they're not doing anything in the gym. You have to go to the gym, work out, and then you see the results because you have to expand those muscles. You have to stretch those muscles so that way they can fill up. So now you see all the dogs diving in because, you know, the body is now requesting, you know, regeneration. And this is a while after the exercise, by the way, guys, about 10, 15 minutes after. Uh, Mufasa, of course, as you can see, I exercise him last because he's younger, so his body requires a food. So he would never turn down the food right now, especially since they're on a one a day feeding. Bloodline. <laughs> so that was just a quick viewing on exactly, you know, some of the steps that we take, you know, on different days in the kennel um it's not the same every day guys so don't believe that it's the same all the time it's, it's just like feeding you know it's not the same all the time just like you as a human being you know it's not the same all the time but that's just one of the ways that we do it you know save a, save me a lot of time you know so um yeah just spending you know five to ten minutes with each dog and another hour for you know house cleaning and whatnot so about two hours a day and um, I should be fine, you know, besides that, maybe another half an hour, just small things, you understand? Maybe washing up the kennel a second time, you know, like in between time, you know, to kind of make it easier on the following day. But yeah, um, that's how we do it, you know, at Bloodline Kennel. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and, you know, we'll be giving you guys some more footage this year. Big up yourself. I hope you guys are excited for what we have coming. Boom.